The 2024 U.S. presidential election campaign is kicking into gear. The election is still 544 days away, but is already exerting its influence on the world stage today. How is the election, arguably the most important in our lifetime, shaping the reaction functions of the main players involved in America's debt ceiling fight in the Ukraine war? With Joe Biden seeking another term by his approval rating at an all-time low, does he prefer a default or a spending cuts? Does he prefer a risky Ukrainian offensive or a prolonged stalemate? How might the U.S. election affect the calculations of Kevin McCarthy, Putin, Zelensky, or even Xi Jinping? And what will all these considerations add up to? Hi, I'm David Wu, a former Wall Street strategist with a 20-year track record of making actionable predictions about major global change. On April 25th, President Joe Biden announced his re-election bid. A day earlier, we find out that the Democratic National Committee is planning no primary debates. Biden's approval rating is 36%, but the Democratic Party leadership, rightly or wrongly, has decided that he's the only Democrat who can beat former President Donald Trump next year. Why? Is it because the Democrats are banking on the power of incumbency? Only 10 American presidents have failed to secure a second term out of 31 who tried. This means all else being equal, Biden has a decent statistical chance of winning the 2024 elections just because he's already the president. The problem is that not all else will be equal in 2024. For one thing, with America becoming more and more polarized, presidential elections are decided by an ever narrower margin. Biden defeated Trump in 2020 over just three states with a combined margin of 40,000 votes. Trump defeated Hillary Clinton in 2016 over just three states with a combined margin of 80,000 votes. This is upending everything we thought we knew about how U.S. elections work. Polarization also means that policy issues matter more in U.S. elections now than in the past. I'm willing to bet that these issues will be more important in 2024 than in any previous election cycle. One Matthew Bartlett, the head of a PR firm, summed it up nicely. Voters in 2024 are not looking for a candidate to have a beer with. They are looking for a candidate that will break a beer bottle over the opponent's head. Right now, polls are showing that the most important issue on the mind of voters is the economy. Despite the unemployment rate at a record low, polls show that voters hold a very negative view on the economy. Moreover, a new poll by the Washington Post and ABC News shows that by 54% to 36%, Americans think Trump did a better job handling the economy when he was president than Biden has done during his presidency so far. Incumbent presidents may have an advantage in presidential elections, but not when there is a recession. The economy calls Herbert Hoover, Jimmy Carter, and George Bush their shots at a second term. Wall Street economists are currently given a 65% chance of a recession over the next 12 months. If Biden wants to win in 2024, he will have to prove Wall Street economists wrong. Trump, who is leading the Republican field by nearly 30 points in the poll, is smelling blood. He's hammering Biden over his handling of the economy at every campaign stop. When I left office, we handed Joe Biden the fastest economic recovery ever recorded, all with no inflation. We didn't have inflation. He took that booming economy and he promptly blew it to shreds. Is there anything Biden can do to avoid a recession next year? Another issue that could prove decisive in 2024 is the Ukraine war. Not that foreign policy has ever tilted the balance of U.S. presidential elections. However, the Ukraine war is different. Short of sending boots on the ground, Biden has committed the U.S. in almost every possible way in this war. The total engagement of the U.S. in this war is a defining policy of the Biden administration. As a result, it is difficult to believe that the outcome of the war will not have an important impact on Biden's chances in 2024. 
A victory for Ukraine, which will be looked upon as a vindication of the liberal values of the U.S.-led unipolar world and a strengthening of U.S. hegemony, will likely help Biden. In contrast, a defeat for Ukraine, which will strengthen the multipolar world led by China and Russia, will likely hurt Biden. In this regard, it is probably no coincidence that the first serious challenger Biden is facing for the Democratic Party's nomination is wasting no time attacking his policy in Ukraine. Robert Kennedy Jr., the nephew of JFK and the son of Robert Kennedy, who announced last month that he will be running for president, has this to say in a tweet last week that was seen by six million people. Zelensky almost certainly could have avoided a 2022 war with Russia simply by uttering five words, I will not join NATO. But pressure by neocons in the Biden White House and by violent fascist elements within the Ukrainian government, Zelensky integrated his army with NATO's and allowed the U.S. to place nuclear-capable Aegis missile launchers along Ukraine's 1,200-mile border with Russia. Let's face it, the neocons wanted this war with Russia, just as they wanted war with Iraq. The point is not whether Kennedy really meant there are already Aegis missiles launchers in Ukraine. Kennedy is running as an anti-war candidate. Kennedy is even reviving the talk that his uncle JFK was assassinated by the CIA for not wanting to go to war in Vietnam. The point is that less than a month after Kennedy threw his hat in the ring, the polls are showing him with already 20% of support for the Democratic Party nomination. The Democratic National Convention is still 14 months away, but if Ukraine is going to become an election issue, how will election considerations influence Biden's Ukraine policy right now? That is the million dollar question. So much can happen between now and the 2024 U.S. presidential election that I'm not going to waste my time and yours making a prediction that will almost certainly be wrong. We care about the election today only because it would exert an important influence on people's decisions long before election day. By people, of course, I mean individuals who have an important stake in the election, those whose decisions matter for the world. Biden. Kevin McCarthy, Zelensky, Vladimir Putin, and even Xi Jinping. These players are involved in two wars being fought right now. One in Ukraine between the U.S. and Russia. The other one in Washington between the Republicans and the Democrats over the debt ceiling. For Biden, conceding to the demands of the Republicans for raising the debt ceiling means accepting a 2024 defeat. This is because with the economy already slowing, $150 billion of spending cuts will substantially increase the chance of a recession. Also, reneging on his promise to forgive student debt will likely cost him the youth vote that was crucial to his victory in 2020. For Kevin McCarthy, there's little room for compromise either. Many House Republicans already consider the demands that he's outlined for raising the debt ceiling as too weak. With a new rules change that requires only one House member to trigger a vote to vacate the chair of the Speaker, McCarthy has to stick close to the party line while risk losing his job. A default will not reflect well on the Republican Party, but it will be worse for Biden, as voters tend to hold the party in charge responsible when bad things happen. Biden has hinted that he might decide to try out a controversial legal theory based on the 14th Amendment that some legal scholars said would allow him to bypass Congress and raise the nation's debt limit. Such a move might lead to litigations and further poison the partisan divide, but it will buy Biden time. The least painful spending cuts for the economy would be defense spending. The fact that both sides say they don't want to cut defense probably makes it the most likely ground for eventual compromise. This is also why there's a lot writing on how the Ukraine war plays out in the coming weeks. A new University of Maryland critical issues poll found that U.S. public's preparedness to pay a price for supporting Ukraine is on a decline. Interestingly, this coincides with a parallel drop in the assessment of the respondents that Ukraine has the upper hand. Indeed, the assessment that Russia is losing fell from 48% in October 
to 37% in April. And that assessment that Ukraine is succeeding went from 43% in October to just 26% in April. What these results could be telling us is that the willingness of American taxpayers to continue to bankroll Ukraine at this point is conditioned on the success of Ukraine in the battlefield. In other words, the American public has little appetite to finance an expensive stalemate. This reality and the rise of Robert Kennedy Jr. will leave Biden with little choice. He will pressure Zelensky to launch his long-awaited offensive to show results in the battlefield, to show that all the Western equipment and training that he's received is making a big difference. Zelensky may or may not be ready to launch an attack, but at this point, it is not up to him. The Ukrainian offensive is imminent if it hasn't started already. Zelensky's strategy will be dictated by the American political timetable. A slow grind is not going to get him anywhere. His best chance is a rapid escalation in the hope of crashing through Russian defenses in the south using brute force and pushing the Russian army towards the Azov Sea. This will be a dangerous move given the Russians are well dug in and given Ukraine does not have sufficient support from the air. The clash between the two sides in the coming weeks will be something that we have not seen so far in this war. It will be ugly. For Zelensky, this is a one-shot offensive as he knows Western ammunition supplies are depleted. He will need to make it count. We should assume that Putin understands the American calculations and that he understands that he cannot allow Zelensky to succeed. He will dig deep and keep nothing back to prevail. If the Ukrainian offensive does not go as well as Biden is counting on, then he faces two options. One, cut Zelensky loose and force him to negotiate in the hope that by the time the 2024 elections roll around, voters won't care about Ukraine or won't remember anymore. Two, up the ante in the war by stepping up American military support. Long-range missiles, anyone? The second option is one that I'm most afraid of, and so should you be. It is reasonable to assume that whichever option he goes for, this is when the Chinese will get directly involved, either by helping to broker a negotiation or by sending arms to Russia. Let's hope Biden makes the right choice, but it won't be an easy decision. If you got something out of this program, please hit like and subscribe to my free YouTube channel. If you want to learn more about my investment strategy, come visit us at davidwuunbound.com. Thank you for listening.